In late March, Russia continued the buildup of military forces near the Ukrainian eastern border, reaching 30 to 40,000 troops by April. The deployment was likely used to threaten escalation and stymie Ukraine's response to unfolding events. Concerns were expressed that Russia might again be readying an incursion into Ukraine following its annexation of Crimea. This threat forced Ukraine to divert force deployment to its borders instead of the conflict zone. In April, armed conflict began in eastern Ukraine between Russian backed separatist forces and Ukrainian government. The separatists declared the People's Republics of Donetsk and Luhansk. From 6 April, militants occupied government buildings in many cities and took control of border crossings to Russia, transport hubs broadcasting center, and other strategic infrastructure. Faced with continued expansion of separatist territorial control, on 15 April the Ukrainian interim government launched an anti-terrorist operation, ATO, however, Ukrainian military and security services were poorly prepared and ill-positioned and the operation quickly stalled. By the end of April, the Ukrainian government announced it had no full control of the provinces of Donetsk and Luhansk being on full combat alert against a possible Russian invasion and reinstatement of conscription to the armed forces. Through May, Ukrainian campaign focused on containing the separatists by securing key positions around the auto zone to position the military for a decisive offensive against the rebel enclave once Ukraine's national mobilization complete. As conflict between the separatists and the Ukrainian government escalated in May, Russia began to employ a hybrid approach deploying a combination of disinformation tactics, irregular fighters, regular Russian troops, and conventional military support to support the separatists and destabilize the Donbas region. The first battle of Donetsk airport that followed the Ukrainian presidential elections marked a turning point in conflict, it was the first battle between the separatists and the Ukrainian government that involved large numbers of Russian volunteers, 15 according to the Ukrainian government, at the height of the conflict in the summer of 2014. Russian paramilitaries were reported to make up between 15% to 80% of the combatants. From June Russia trickled in arms, armor, and munitions to the separatist forces. By the end of July, they were pushing into Donetsk and Luhansk cities, to cut off supply routes between the two, isolating Donetsk and thought to restore control of the Russo-Ukrainian border. By 28 of July, the strategic heights of Severa Mihaila were under Ukrainian control along with the town of Dabaltsev, an important railroad hub. These operational successes of Ukrainian forces threatened the very existence of Russian-supported DPR and LPR statelets, prompting Russian cross-border artillery shelling targeted against advancing Ukrainian troops on their own soil. From mid-July onwards. American and Ukrainian officials said they had evidence of Russian interference in Ukraine, including intercepted communications between Russian officials and Donbas insurgents. Ukrainian media have described the well-organized and well-armed pro-Russian militants as similar to those who occupied regions of Crimea during the Crimean crisis. The former deputy chief of the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, Admiral Lihor Kobanenko, said that the militants are Russian military reconnaissance and sabotage units. Arsen Avakov stated that the militants in Krasny Lyman used Russian made AK 100 series assault rifles fitted with grenade launchers, and that such weapons are only issued in the Russian Federation. The government of Ukraine is considering the facts of today as a manifestation of external aggression by Russia, said Avakov. Militants in Slavyansk arrived in military lorries without license plates. A reporter from Russia's Novaya Gazeta, having visited separatist artillery positions in Avdivka, wrote that in his opinion it's impossible that the cannons are handled by volunteers as they require a trained and experienced team, including observers and adjustment experts, 